to victory. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, thank you for this good day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in giving us your power, your mind, your word that empowers us and strengthens us faith, hope, and love living and abiding in us and through us, giving us the mighty victory of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Caroline, this is just wonderful, girl. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so excited about the things that we're learning. It's good, isn't it? It is. You know, I, I'm... It's going to help you a lot. It's going to help <laughs> I was just thinking that, Gloria. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love that. Well, thank you, Lord. A merry heart does good like a medicine. That's a good one. I was thinking, Gloria, as as Caroline's been teaching, there's, I, I, I think of incidents and things that's happened to us over the last 50 yeah. um two years that we've been in this ministry and how the love of God has been the thing that was so protective oh, of you and me. Cause we could have, I, I mean, we could have been a, we could have been in a state of strife all the time. There's somebody saying something ugly about us all the time. And it, you know, that, and people make sure that you, you yeah. hear it, you know, make sure you get it. <laughs> and, um, I remember that back the time when, when uh, Senator Grassley's office was, and they they six different churches that ministries yeah, and, and we were uh, under attack of that, and I whoa, we really had to practice that during that yeah to keep from just staying in a just wanting to spank somebody you know <laughs> lay on hands yeah and uh, <laughs> yeah suddenly very suddenly. But you, you can't do that. No. And uh, so we learned how to, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9, well, actually 6 through 10, casting the whole of your care over on him once and for all. And, uh, and so just didn't touch it. Well, in, in just staying there, I, I learned this. That person will come up in front of you. Immediately, I mean, before that thought has a chance to, to even germinate, just immediately they say, "Oh, I, I would do this." I would say, oh, "Glory to God, I love, I love Senator Grassley, and I do, <laughs> and um, I love that man, and, and I hold faith up around him in the name of Jesus. I forgive him because actually he was very little responsible for this thing. It was members of his staff that, that actually caused the trouble." Yeah. But anyway, I didn't know that at the time. And so I just, just hold that there, just hold it there and hold it there until that thought subsided. To keep it from, from, because if you ever start that conversation mm -hmm. in your mind, be well now, you know, if I, if I see him, I see him. Blah, 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 blah. And, and you start doing that and that running conversation gets more toxic as you go. It doesn't improve, it gets yeah. worse. Now the tsunami has started and that stuff's running through your body. And then, then comes, after that comes the flu. And then after that comes, because you're breaking down your immune system and all of that. All the bad stuff comes too. And the, 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 the terrible thing is most people don't have a clue that that's behind exactly. the problems in their lives. Exactly. But all the time, it just, it's, it just takes a few seconds yeah. and you just say it out loud, my, I love that guy. I pray for him. God help him. And just, not, just don't let the devil start feeding that stuff to you. And after a while, you get to where it, it, it begins to go away. Now, I want to set all that to say this. It was at a moment like that, that suddenly, wow, that's the answer to that. 
I saw how to stop it. Wow. And so I, I called John in and I told him, I said, now here, John, now here's what we need to do. I said, you call our friend over there at, at, at a certain local TV station news, and then you get him and get over there with his camera, yeah. and then you get our cameras there, and you call over to Dallas, the IRS office over there, and, uh, and you tell them you want to meet the director there on the, on the front steps mm -hmm. and take all that information <laughs> that, that uh, Mr. Crashley's office was Thanks. wanting that we, there's no way we're going to turn it over to them because if you, if you violate the, the confidentiality that's afforded you, you violated your partners, you violated, you know, this, and I couldn't do that. I said, sir, and John said, Mr. Grassley, here's all the information that you've asked for and, and handed it to the director. And he said now, and gave them the address of the Internal Revenue Office in, in Dallas. And he said, now here is a letter addressed to you through the director here of the IRS, inviting you in the presence of the IRS and inviting the IRS to come do a complete church investigation, or in other words, an audit. Yeah. Anytime any day of any week. Thank you very much. It ended. Wow. There was no answer to that. And the wow. guy over there at the IRS told John, he said, y'all forget that. We don't come over there and audit you guys. He said, we audit you every year. He said, we know, we know you people. Then he said, who do they think they are telling us to try to run our business down here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Such a good answer. So see what happened? Yeah. Love showed me what to do. You conquered the, yeah. I would have never received that ever. It'd Not in a hundred years mad at the senator. Exactly. You got, you got no wisdom. No. No wisdom when you're crazy in the zone. Oh, I can, yeah. <laughs> that's really the truth. I didn't mean to say that you're not crazy. Well, no, but that's really the truth. You do go a little crazy. Because those are crazy you. thoughts. Yeah, they are. And, and they, 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 if they're not love thoughts, yeah. then they don't produce faith, they produce fear. Exactly. And they're still producing. That's the key issue. They're still productive. And that's the devil's territory. And if he keep you over there in that so, thought no. realm and in that, that strife realm, he'll whip you 100% of the time. But if you keep him in the love, faith realm, you can whip him 100%. Exactly, exactly. Yes. You know, a scripture that's always helped me so much, because Ken and I, we've had, <clears throat> he's not the first guy that ever said anything ugly about us, but... The scripture says in, in uh, the Amplified, love is not touchy, fretful, or resentful. Pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Mm. Does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. The most needful of those is love is not touchy, fretful, yeah. or resentful. So Somebody... Good offend you, be quick to forgive, and you go free. And then what they do is their problem. That's Amen. brilliant. Boy, isn't that that's good? brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's brilliant. Yes, that Thanks. summarizes Thanks. it all. I mean, that's really, that's, that's the key and, and issue. And at the bottom of that is yeah. love never fails. Love never fails. Love and love conquers fails. all. That's, that's just, the key. Yeah. That's the end I think we should, right if we there. spend more time as humanity focusing on that scripture, we would be oh, very different. It would be a wonderful world. It would be a wonderful world. It would be because we'd learn to live in that zone. And there's more people doing that now than ever exactly. in the history of I the planet. Exactly, exactly. Thanks to people like you, praise the Lord. <laughs> and you. <laughs> and the, those of us that have learned these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people are hungry for They're them. They're hungry. There's, you can never, love is, is, a, is a guaranteed message that everyone will listen to. There isn't anyone from one side of the planet to the next that won't listen to the concept of love. And you've spoken about these certain, certain principles that you've spoken about here, and if I may bring them back to a scientific level, there's a discipline involved in this process. You know, like you're saying, Gloria, it's, it's to discipline yourself. Don't get fretful, don't do that. You know, really master those things. It's a choice once again, but it's a disciplined, intentional and deliberate, self-regulated choice that we need to make 
every 10 seconds, which is what we're designed to do. So it's not just now and then, it's every 10 seconds. Six times a minute we have the opportunity yeah, to, to consciously, it. exactly, practice it. Practice so, it. exactly. so it becomes habituated. And that's what in my research, what I wanted to try and help my patients do and myself do, is how do you make that a lifestyle? that it's constant all the time. So I wanted to see what happens when your mind works through your brain. What is the process that happens in building memory? In building the memory of this scripture, for example, as a lifestyle, that as someone says those ugly things, that you immediately don't get fretful, that you immediately, as you said, it goes away, it becomes their problem, it's not your problem, don't take that into you. You and go that's, free. You go free. So that's on the one hand, how do you block the toxic and get free? And how do you build your brain? Like the story of Daniel uh, Mills, what, uh, uh, Daniels, Peter Daniels. Yeah, Peter Daniels. We have to build our <coughs> brain. So we see from research that our brain is designed to be grown every day. If you don't grow your brain every day, your brain becomes toxic. You develop toxic waste. So when you wake up in the morning, you're born with all these extra brain cells mm -hmm. that you're supposed to think into action during the course of the day by learning. So as we go through the day, we're supposed to study. And that's what I was saying in yesterday's broadcast. And you can choose the elements of what you want to study. You're always learning. You're a thinking being. So you're always all during the day. But you need to have packets of the day allocated to study. And obviously studying the, the, the scriptures would be a priority so that you get those principles in your head and daily. Also studying the knowledge of whatever you're interested in. I always tell people my buy books or textbooks of how to do this. So you study them and then find something you're interested in. You know, maybe you're interested in, maybe you're still at school. Make sure that you study well, that you become excellent at what you're doing. Maybe you always had an interest in a, some topic and you're not at school, but you want to just grow your brain. So go and take up some other, do a course if it's for non-exam credits or whatever, keep studying. That is one of the best ways mm. of growing the brain, mm. keeping the brain and the mind mentally healthy and actually being able mm. to discipline. It's part of the discipline of the mind and the brain to actually operate in the love zone. So we're not told that enough. We're not told that if you grow your brain, you'll discipline your brain. That's the one side. There's a five step in doing that. There's a five step process that our mind goes through in order to wire new information into the brain and to make it a habit. There's five steps and there's a time period. So even though our spirit man, 99% is beyond space and time, we have to use time consciously and deliberately, the today, tomorrow, next week, etc., in order to make sure something goes into the realm of the spirit. Okay, so to make something, None time, we have to use time, which doesn't make sense, but it does make sense, it's how it works. So in other words, if research shows that if we do five steps daily, for a, um, five steps daily for at least one 45 minute session to build our brain, but I'd recommend more. I try and do at least two to three hours every day and to build my brain. And if I use also the same five steps to detox my brain, and I'm doing that mm. daily, but the, the detoxing part you only do for about seven to 16 minutes. And the reason being is because you're dealing with toxicity and toxic feelings. This is healthy and healthy feelings, so that's good, we can keep growing. But this you can only handle about 15 minutes a day. And it goes to what you were saying, that if you keep thinking about it, you just get worse and worse, the tsunami. Mm -hmm. So you've got to control the tsunami because when you bring this up, remember as soon as you start, okay, so in these five steps, what do they do? And then I'll, then I'll bring it back to the tsunami. Essentially, and I go into depth in this book on these five steps and how to use them to build your brain and detox your brain. So essentially, when you are focusing, like now you are focusing on what I'm saying, the listeners are focusing on what I'm saying, the audience is focusing on what I'm saying, you've made a decision to focus, you shut everything else out and you are making a concerted effort to learn. That already aligns your brain and prepares your brain to start building. So you start building, you start gathering awareness of the incoming information. So step number one is choose to focus deliberately and intentionally on that and not let the distractions come in. And you tell yourself when you focus. So that's, that's just, I'm just giving you the big picture. That's the first thing. It starts preparing the brain then for learning. The second thing is that you then have to really analyze the information. And I basically break that into three steps, which is ask, answer, discuss. Ask, answer, discuss. Ask, answer, discuss. But what we're doing here, the conversation we're having is a very good example mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. where we talk about something, we're asking, we're answering, we're discussing. And you do that in depth over a paragraph at a time. So you read a paragraph, you ask, answer, discuss. So you read a paragraph or you listen. That's The first step is get it in, Le reading or listening. Second tip, step is this deep and the analytical thinking, meditating. Mm -hmm. The third step is write it down. 
the brain writes it. So when you write with your hands, you force your brain in the direction you want mm. it to go. Well, that's the thought. Yeah, so yeah. you that's why you're always writing, which is excellent. So you're forcing it in the way you want it to go. You're disciplining your, your brain. Then you check what you've written to see does this make sense. You align it back with the original source material that you read from. So you, you just do it a paragraph at a time. You don't go and try and do it with a whole big text. You just a paragraph at a time, read it, think about it, write it down, check it, and then say, okay, what do I learn from this? What is my action from this particular thing that I've, that I've worked on in terms of building my brain? What can I, and maybe it's something like, if it's detoxing, something that I, um, that I was working on um, for a long time in my life was I always would say, if only, if only I did it this way and get myself mm -hmm. stuck in such torment because I didn't and I, you know, okay, so you, you can recognize. Sure, yeah. So by doing this process as a detox, over a period of daily five to seven minutes a day, I'd apply those five steps and in that search through, why do I say that? Where is it coming from? You start getting to the roots of why you do what you do. Then you, you don't stay stuck in the toxic because it's very constructive. Those five steps are very constructive. I'm becoming aware, I'm thinking it through and it's limited. I'm doing this in seven to 16 minutes. So I'm only allowing one and a half minutes per step. So one and a half minutes to become aware, one minute. One and a half minutes to do the analyzing, one and a half minutes to write, one and a half minutes to do the checking and one and a half minutes to work out some sort of little active reach. Now you do that today in that time period and then tomorrow you pick it up again and you go a little further and you go a little further. And what we find is from the research, and this is very what I was really immersed in for years, was within 21 days you have literally destroyed this completely You've redesigned it, reconceptualized it into a healthy replacement way of thinking. Praise God. Now yeah. that becomes the new way of thinking. So to let's think it back, link it back to Senator Grasley and what you went through, yeah. and as the example, now here's the situation that activated it. So you didn't make consciously go through the steps, but you did them because it worked. So you were doing them unconsciously. You were grabbing every time you had that toxic thought. You were thinking, this is not good for me, this is not what the scriptures yeah. say, whatever, you did a think thing. You maybe didn't always write it down, but your brain writes things anyway. But sometimes you may, in your Bible studies, have written down a few notes to yourself, because I know you both write when you do your studies, and that would have been a topic. So at some point you wrote, you then worked out, you checked what you were writing, this is going to destroy me. You worked out a plan of action. So that you do that consciously during the day, but in, in, that, in that seven to 16 minutes, but in the day when the opportunity comes up, Oh, you hear another thing, you hear another thing. Now he's saying this, now they're saying that. Now you have multiple opportunities during the course of the day to respond negatively, but you did your work in the morning. So you have this active reach. Step number five is this action. When I hear another thing about Senator Grasley attacking my ministry and saying this about me and Gloria or me and Kenneth, I am going to, because you already worked it out in the morning, so you don't have to go through the five steps again. You simply apply in that instant. I will love, I will whatever it is that you did. Mm -hmm. So you then mm -hmm. train yourself. Oh, by the 21st day, after three weeks, you have, as I said, destroyed this, built up a long-term memory. As this thing goes on, now for, you know, you're still hearing things that takes through, it, it didn't just finish in a week or three weeks, it carried on for a few months. So I'm using this example to help people understand. What we see from research is that now it's much easier next month because I've done the three weeks, I've got a long-term oh, memory. That's, that, that's a big thing too. It becomes easier. Yeah, it's becoming it's easier. It's become easier only because you've done the work. The first 21 days are so hard. The first four days are really hard and most people give up at day four but if you push through and you persevere <coughs> and you get to day 21 by day 63 now in the second two rounds when you go from because it's, it's cycles of 21 days that you work these three week cycles it's how our brain our body and our mind heal in cycles of 21. the first 21 is the real hard work it's the you sit down deliberately intentionally every day and detox or you sit down deliberately and intentionally every day and build and the building is is good stuff, so you spend long on it. The detoxing is you're getting rid of bad stuff, so you only spend seven to 16 minutes. No limit on building, limit on toxic, okay, on detoxing. So now, once you pass the hard work time of 21 days, it's now kind of easy. So now you just need a reminder. I put reminders on my phone. I have an app to help that I've created that actually helps people to to in, to do this, where you've got a, and it pops up, it'll pop up every day on my phone, on my computer, all my devices, and it says, remember, 
don't do an if only today or whatever it is that I'm working on. So all I is it's a prompt and I remember not to do it. So when I'm in a situation and I feel myself going back into my if only, because I've been reminded multiple times a day, it's easy for me to grab, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do this. Because I'm now practicing using this, I remember how I was, this is no longer here, I now have transformed my mind. It's discipline, it's choice, it's hard work, but by day 63 you now have a habit and now something miraculous has happened. By the 63rd day, you have pushed that conscious, deliberate, beautiful, new, healthy thought that you've built with your mind and your physical brain. It's in two places, in your physical brain and in your mind. You've now pushed it in your spirit. Yeah. So now it's gone from the... It's from registered the, in it's your in heart. in your now. spirit. So the three levels, you're using your mind to change the physical. And now it'll change And now your exactly, it goes in the spirit. People don't yeah, get to that point. They give up at day four, they give up at day seven, they give up at day 21. They just give up and then they keep starting again. And then 20 years later, they come into you with the same issue and the same problem. I didn't allow my patients to do that. We worked on cycles of 63 days. And if they weren't transforming, whether it was a learning skill, whatever, we would, I would say, okay, now we have to have a little conversation here. We have a contract in place. You need to understand that I can't fix you. You fix you. I give you the techniques, but you have to take the choice. And that's exactly what the scriptures say to us too. God is there with everything for us, mm -hmm. but we have to choose to take that. We have to choose to step in the love zone and access wisdom. It's not going to jump on you. You have to jump into love. So that's the principle of operating. I teach that in here. Praise Sorry. God. I gave a whole preach there. Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. It's exciting. This, and it's doable. <laughs> um, Jesus literally had to break the force of what Adam did. You and I have no concept. We can't understand it. We don't have any concept of what this environment was like before Jesus was crucified and went to hell and broke Satan's power over this thing. We have no idea what kind of dark pressure was on this planet for many thousands of years. We don't have a clue because we've never experienced that. As bad as stuff is now, at least people are not eating their children. They did back then. And, and it was, it, whoa, it was crushing. But thank God, Jesus broke his power and our freedom is so much more obtainable than it was back exactly. then. Exactly. And we've, we have his word, we have his spirit, we have his name, glory to God. We have his science. Yes. We have God's science, and which the is the beautiful how part of the beautiful part of the science is he explains it. It does, and gives you the hands on how to do it, the discipline, do this, because people, that's what people would ask me. How do I do that? I believe, I, whatever, but how do I do it? So now I can, it's been such a, a pleasurable journey for me. And we're out of time. To see people change. Sorry. Remember, right where you were. I am. <laughs> Got it. I captured the good thought this time. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But it's good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise the Lord. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.